I want to start with a, just a, a little introduction about what, what are the rules, where do they come from, what sort of stage are they at and so on. And then I want to talk my way a little bit through the rules and explain to you some of the, the main points in them. Okay? Just to let you see what they look like. This is them in draft form, 50 odd pages. It's all legalese and the good news for you is you don't need to know that particularly well. The bits that appertain to you, we will train you in and we will put in the step-by-step -step procedures and things like that. But it's handy for you to know where they come from and, and, and what some of the thinking was when, when, when they went in there. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Okay, so we'll start with what are the procedural rules and what they are is secondary legislation. And again, Robert mentioned the secondary legislation earlier on today. Heaps and heaps of it, but this is very definitely the big one. And I don't say that just because I worked on it. It is the big one because there are a hundred rules in here. Um, so it's quite a substantial document. Um, what are they? Well, what's in there are directions. And I use the word directions because the rules are law. It's, it's secondary legislation. What it says in there, it's a matter of law. It must be done. So it's no, no different as far as you're concerned in a hearing. If it's in the rules or it's in the Act, no difference to you. It's something you have to do. But it's mainly directions to the reporter. There's also directions to panel members. And there's even bits in there that are for the family and any legal representative. Uh, so there's bits for, for, for all sorts of people in there. The good news for you is that the whole bulk of it, or not the whole of it, sorry, the, the bulk of it is actually for reporter or for SCRA. What I want to do now is, is actually talk about what's in, what's in them. What, what are they all about? Now, I've already said there's 100 rules. It's divided into 22 parts. The vast majority apply to SCRA. And you'll see that as we go through. The vast majority apply to the reporters, not to you. Those that directly affect you as panel members will be built into the best practice and the step-by-step -step guidance. Part one is simply the introduction, it's the citation that simply says these rules come into effect on such and such. Um, um, and all it says is these rules come into effect when the 2011 Act comes into effect. So they just piggyback onto the 2011 Act. So as soon as that's in place, June 24th next year, then the, the rules come into play as well. The other bit is called interpretation, it's definitions and things like that, key definitions of who the principal reporter is and, 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 and people like that. Section 2 talks about the selection and duties of hearing members. And the new Act actually places the duty of selecting who sits on a hearing, places that duty on the National Convener. It's currently on your panel chair. Now I suspect the National Convener will delegate that task anyway. In fact, I know the National Convener will delegate that task. But part two of the rules covers some of the things that, that, um, the, that this will allow. I've, I've tried to put in a bit of slack in there. One of the things I've put in there is uh, it's, it's actually written into the rules now that you as panel members can ask for continuity. So there's no ambiguity over that. It's not for the report to say, oh, you can't have continuity or you might have continuity. If you ask for continuity, what it says in the rules is that the national convener must do their utmost to ensure there is continuity. The thing I've got up there, selection of chair, and this sometimes causes a little, oh, a bit of excitement. In some areas, the who chairs what hearing is designated before you get there. In other areas, the three panel members turn up and decide on the day. The, panel, the, the areas where they actually decide on the day at the moment probably aren't strictly legal. <laughs> Strict, they're, they're, certainly it's not within the rules, but it's in the new rules. So if the, if the national convener or the area support team or whoever that job is delegated to doesn't say you must chair that hearing, then the panel members can decide amongst themselves. And the other important thing it says in section two, and this is in the old rules, but procedures determined by the chair when it's not provided for in the Act and Rules. So what that's saying is, you know, if it's in the Act or it's in the Rules, you've got to do it. But if there's nothing covering the situation that you find yourself in, then the chairman of the hearing, or chairperson, I suppose I should say, makes a decision and that is a, a legally acceptable decision. It might go to appeal, it might go anywhere, but for the purposes of the law, it's a lawful decision. Part three, duties of persons attending. This is about uh, who has a right to be there 
um, who has a right to a legal representative, or, 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 or the fact that the child and, and relevant persons have a right to ha bring along a legal representative, we'll talk a bit more about that later on, also talks about safety of documents, keeping documents safe, keeping them secure and so on. A couple of things that I wanted to just pull out, there's, it places the, the, the Act and rules now place a duty on report writers to cover the child's views. It's a duty. They must do it. So anybody who's writing a report to that hearing can give you their views, because they're the report writer, but they must give you, they must seek, and if they obtain them, give you the child's view. One of the duties of the chair will be at the beginning of the hearing to look at the reports, see where the child's view is represented, and actually say to the child, hey Jimmy, it says in here, you want to do this, or this is what's happened, da 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 da. Is that what you told the social worker, or is that what you told the care worker, is that what you told your teacher? So, uh, so that's, that's something that's a little bit new. And the rights of representatives, um, just as a, as a, a wee bit of an aside, legal representatives as you know them now, the ones that you appoint, I'm not, I'm not meaning when people bring their own solicitor, you know, the legal reps that you appoint, that system is going completely. That was always a temporary system and that's going completely. Uh, there are certain circumstances where the child will automatically get legal aid because it's all gone to a legal aid basis now. There are certain circumstances, second working day hearing, eighth working day hearing, child brought from custody, um, child likely to go to secure, the child will automatically get legal aid, only the child. Um, other cases for legal aid will be where you decide that the child or the relevant person isn't understanding and there are complex legal issues. In those instances, you instruct the reporter, or you direct, in terms of the rules, you direct the reporter to write to the Scottish Legal Aid Board who will consider legal aid for them. OK, I'll move on to part four. Part four, general duties of the reporter. So good news there, it's all about the reporter. You know, their record keeping, what records they've got to keep. Withholding the address. Th th this is withholding the address right at the start of the hearing process. This is not non-disclosure of address. I got myself into a bit of a frankle last time. Someone thought I was talking about non-disclosure. This is, this is at the stage when the reporter's writing out, um, saying, I'm inviting wee Jimmy to a hearing, blah, 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 blah. It might be that... We, Jimmy and his mum, have fled from a violent partner, but this partner is a relevant person. All this bit in the rules gives the reporter the right to do is when they're sending the papers out to this violent partner or anybody else, you know, they don't have to put the child's address in, they can put the addresses care of the reporter's office. Okay? So that's withholding address. And Rule 18, um, it, it, again, it's, it's just tightening up something that's always been there. Um, the reporter does have to send papers out to the child, and that's, that's now clearly written into the rules. There's no age concessions given apart from Rule 18, which basically says if the child's too young to understand or doesn't have the mental capacity to understand, there is little or no point in sending papers out, therefore the reporter doesn't have to. So it, it just makes legal what the reporter's been doing. Attendance at hearings, just, this is all about bringing representatives and so on and so forth. Again, very much in the reporter's uh, um, fold again. But attendance by video link has been put in there. Um, this is, there's some, some clear safeguards in this. Um, but what we're saying is if, if a relevant person or a child wants to be at a hearing but is unavoidably unable to get there, then in certain circumstances they can attend by video link. There was never anything in the Act before that says they could do it. Someone told me earlier on in the last session that they had actually done it in their area, which is great. Um, but this is making that acceptable now. Now, it, the, the, we've tried to write safeguards in there to make sure that this isn't used by kids who don't want to come to hearing or dads who don't want to come to hearings or whatever. It, it, there's, there's an element of judgment in there, again, primarily by the reporter, um, but again, it could be appealed if the, if the reporter didn't allow it and so on. Um, but it's, it's you know, mum, mum, mum's taken into hospital, but the, the supervision requirement, it's not called that in the new act, but never mind, the supervision requirement is about to, to, 
to, to run out and you've got to have a hearing. But mum's desperate to be there. She has things she wants to tell you. You could set up a video link, this type of thing. <coughs> arranging hearings, general part six is arranging hearings. That's all about notifications and information to be sent out. There's a lot more in there, uh, information that the reporter's got to send out. We've beefed that up a fair old bit to make sure that all, all we've really done is what good reporters were doing, what, be, what was best practice in some areas, we've tried to make it good practice in all areas to make sure that kids get the have your say documents, to make sure that they're told that they can bring a legal representative if they want, you know, and all these things. So, uh, so, so that's all in uh, six, in fact it goes right on through six. Special provisions for ground hearings, exactly the same as six really, all about notification, additional information. The new Act makes a bit of a distinction between a grounds hearing and, and other hearings. That's why the rules have actually grown so much. The new Act actually has several different types of hearings and, and, and kind of splits them up. So what we've had to do with the rules is, is split those as well. So that's specific provisions for grounds hearings. Same there. Deferred hearings or hearings following procedures for the sheriff. Deferred hearings, this is what we would now be calling continued hearings. So uh, that's there. Review hearings. So these are all the different titles you've got there. Specific provisions for hearings where additional grounds are to be put. This seemed to have slipped through the net somehow in the, in the Act that you could have a review hearing where there are fresh grounds. I mean, you, you would all know that because you've all come across it, but it, it seemed to have escaped someone. So we've we, we, we've made provision within the rules to make sure that if that type of hearing happens, there are, there are provisions for it. And then other types of hearings, and, and other types of hearings in there, they're things like your, your second working day hearings, which still exist, eighth working day hearings, advice hearings, all that type of thing.